Well, hey, y'all, it's Cheryl Cresty. You know who I am. You know what to do. I'm not going through the whole spiel. I got the Country Coffee Chats with Cheryl podcast on Spotify and um, the Morn Sand Hills Voices internet blog on Facebook and the World Wide Web. I want to apologize to all of my followers uh, for the fact that I have not done a video in a very long time. I've not done a video companion for the podcast in three weeks, maybe more. Um, not going to really explain myself other than to say that, um, as often happens with people with autoimmune diseases, I have been struggling with my health. And uh, uh, some weeks it was all I could do to get the podcast and the written commentary up, so I just haven't felt like doing these videos. Um, and this is not a video companion to, to this week's podcast. I will say uh, that if you want to go back and listen to it, I talk about um, the Moore County Board of Elections, the mistake they made in the March uh, primary reporting results from the election, and the safeguards they put in place um, to make sure it never happens again. And I also kind of... Uh, give a response uh, to the Board of Elections deciding to take part of a public meeting <clears throat> to try to make me feel bad for, I don't know, reporting on news. Um, and I talk about the Spanish Immersion Program in Robbins Elementary School, how important it is, how necessary it is, and, and how it can be saved since it's now clearly in the sights uh, for elimination by members of the Moore County Board of Education. But I'm not making the video today uh, about any news story that I have covered uh, over the last little while. I'm making it for a totally different reason. I think it's important for my more and Sand Hills Voices followers uh, to be able to understand that who I am as uh, CCB, as people jokingly refer to me, um, the owner and editor and, and, and content provider for more Sand Hills Voices is not the same person that I am in my public education advocacy career, nor who I am as a as an individual person when I'm with my family and the people who love me. I'm s totally different things. Um, more in Sand Hills Voices, I I've been doing only since 2018. I've been a public education advocate, uh, very involved and passionate public education advocate since 2004. That's 20 years, 20 years of my life that I have spent advocating for public schools, public teachers, and certified staff, classified staff in Moore County for them to get paid the money they deserve and get the respect they deserve, advocating for students uh, to get the resources and services they deserve, advocating for, you know, better facilities um, and, and new schools. And I'm, I'm very proud of some of the things that I have gotten accomplished as a public education advocate, I have helped get accomplished. Certainly, I've done nothing on my own, and it was a very small part. Uh, but I'm very proud of the work I have done in the education advocacy community. And I'm most proud of the friendships that I have made and the people in my life that I am now very deeply connected to because we share a passion for advocating for our public schools. One of the things I did say in today's podcast that I want to reiterate here in this video is when you are a community journalist, you never want to be part of the story. Um, I feel like that I have managed to remain out of the story, except in very um, limited incidents when I have been drugged into the story by political leaders uh, trying to make cheap political points by banging on the leftist uh, commentary writer. Um, I don't make any story I, I, I report on personal unless they make it personal first, which is what the Board of Elections did last week. But um, I never want to be part of the story. I want to be the person reporting the story. Unfortunately, I am getting ready to be part of the story. PSA Public School Advocates, which is a group that I founded, co-founded with Alexa Roberts, um, has been working for years in public school advocacy in Moore County and, and across the state of North Carolina. We adopt families at Christmas time so, so that we know that certain Moore County schools families have the gifts that their children deserve, that they can't afford it. Uh, we did a massive food and household items drive uh, during the pandemic. We plan and execute uh, public um thank yous and appreciation events for our teachers and school staff. Uh, we actually signed on to the Leandro lawsuit as, as you know, as a plaintiff. Uh, we do a lot of things in the background that people may not know that we do. 
but we do a lot of things publicly too, uh, from sending petitions to the Board of Education to uh, making political endorsements of candidates that we feel will be uh, good for our public schools. Um, we do a lot to advocate for public schools. And I personally have spent, as I said, 20 years advocating for more funding, better treatment, and, and, and pay for our employees, and better resources for our children served in public schools. But circumstances have forced me now to advocate in a different way. PSA Public School Advocates has joined with PFLAG of Southern Pines and several local Moore County educators to file an official Title IX complaint with the Federal Office of Civil Rights against Moore County Schools for Title IX violations. I need people to understand that although I know this is going to cost Moore County Schools money, something that I never thought I would be in a position to support, everyone needs to know that we tried for a year quietly in the background to get this situation resolved. The fact of the matter is, that the Parents' Bill of Right or Senate Bill 49 in the state of North Carolina is a law in the state of North Carolina and all school districts are unfortunately bound to abide by that law. But Moore County Schools has gone over and above what is required by the law when it comes to the discriminatory language and discriminatory policies that it has passed down against members of the LBGTQ plus community. To the point that this summer they instructed in something called the Principal Implementation Guide all teachers to search for and remove any book that contained any reference to sexuality or pronoun usage, sexual identity. The problem is, is when you're talking about pronoun usage and sexual identity, having a character with the pronoun her well, that's their sexual identity. But even over and above that, the Principal's Implementation Guide specifically called out books that may feature homosexual parents as characters for removal. Title IX is a federal law that clearly, clearly makes it illegal to discriminate against people based on race, sex, or sexual identity and orientation. Every public entity, education entity, that receives federal funds is bound by Title IX under the law to follow those regulations, and Moore County Schools has failed to do so. As I said, we tried for a year to do this quietly in the background, but we were rebuffed and ignored by Moore County Schools at every turn. In April, PFLAG and PSA public, education, uh, public School Advocates sent a final communication to Moore County Schools, giving them 14 days to respond. We sent them a list of very simple remedies and corrections. We were ignored yet again. At that point, we felt we had no choice but to move forward with a formal complaint. That complaint has been filed with the Office of Civil Rights. A press release has been sent to multiple press outlets across the state of North Carolina. I don't know if this complaint will be successful. What I do know is it all could have been avoided if Moore County Schools had bothered to acknowledge the mistakes that they made in their implementation guide and corrected them. But not only did they choose to ignore us, they choose to continue to be antagonistic to the LBGTQ plus community, the LBGTQ plus students who are served in Moore County Schools, and the parents of LBGTQ plus people who are frightened for their children in Moore County Schools. They caused this escalation, not us. I probably will not be covering this story on more voices. Again, I am part of the story. 
I will leave that to other press outlets. I hold out no hope that the pilot or local Moore County outlets will touch it with a 10-foot pole. Lord knows most of them are not going to do anything that might affect their invitations to cocktail parties and golf foursomes. I'm hopeful that it will be picked up by statewide outlets, but if not, I will do what I always do. Cover the stories that everyone else ignores. I will do so with the disclaimer that I am a complainant and a contact for this Title IX complaint. I hope that I am not forced to do that by the inaction, once again, of the statewide and local media to refuse to report on the illegal activity and discrimination in Moore County Schools. The last thing I'm going to say is this. This has been very difficult for me as a person. I've cried. I've talked to my family. I've talked to people very close to me about how do I do this? How do I how do I become part of a complaint that is going to end up costing resources to the very students and teachers that I have been fighting for them to have more resources for all of these years? And this is the answer that I settled on. Because as a public school advocate, it is my responsibility to fight for the rights and the representation of all students in Moore County Schools. I fight for the exceptional child and the academically gifted child. I fight for the child regardless of their race, of their religion, of their socioeconomic circumstances, and of their sexual orientation and their sexual I'm very sad right now, but I know that I have done the right thing. I hope that my fellow education advocates understand. And I do want to point out that my co-founder, Ms. Roberts, was well aware of this, as was leadership of PSA, Public School Advocates. We only notified our members today because we have been trying to keep this quiet, not knowing whether or not we were going to have to move forward with it. Our leadership was very involved, as was my co-founder. We're doing this together. We're doing it for all the children in Moore County Schools and every family in Moore County Schools. And I would just beg you all to remember, we didn't cause this. Moore County Schools caused it. All right, y'all. I love you. And I'll talk to you later.